Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast is all about our journey into the woods of ourselves, getting to know who we are, where we are, and where we're going in life so that we can create the life that we want to live. It's about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. It's also about mindset. Our beliefs are such an important part of this journey, and there are so many ways for us to change our mindset so that we can more easily live a life of expansive joy. This podcast is also about going literally into the woods and spending time in nature, and how that can help us on our own personal journey of self-knowledge. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hello adventurers and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast episode 441. This is your host Holly Wharton and I'm back with another solo episode for the first time in a really long time. I think my last solo episode was about two months ago back in the start of October so it's been a while. Today I'm going to talk about Creating the year you want by planning the adventures that you want and dreaming the adventures that you want into existence. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about the adventures that you had last year, what worked, what didn't, what did you learn from your adventures last year, how are you feeling in general about the year that just finished up, and then turning your vision to what you want to experience in the new year, what places, what activities are calling to you. What new things would you like to try that you've never done before? What would you like to learn in this new year? And I'd like to kind of invite you to give yourself permission to daydream, how to create a menu of adventures for the year, small, medium, large adventures. And I'd like to encourage you to think about adventures in all aspects of your life, which adventures might be good for each season, and just basically thinking about what you want to experience in this new year. So, Welcome to 2022. Happy New Year. I hope that you had a good end of year season. If you celebrated Christmas, you had a good Christmas or other holiday. You had a really good transition into the new year. So this is the first Monday of 2022 as you're listening to this or beyond, but that's when this goes live. So I'd just like to say welcome to the new year. Really hoping that you have a bright and beautiful and joyful 2022, full of adventures and full of great times. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to quickly mention why it's been such a long time since I've done a solo episode. As I said, it's been a couple of months, three months actually, now that I look at the calendar. And yeah, it's just last year was a really rough year. I think I, as many people, thought that this whole COVID thing would kind of die down and go away. I guess now that realize that was wishful thinking, we're still in the middle of new variants and things. And yeah, so last year was not what I expected it to be. I did not have the adventures I was expecting to have. I did not have the adventures I hoped to have. But I did other things. I did things that kind of went beyond what I expected in 2021. So yeah, so it was, you know, as I said, not what I expected. And I was just really really stressed and I had a lot of anxiety and my mental health was kind of like up and down throughout the year. And yeah, so I found it really challenging to even think of topics to do a solo episode for you and even think about topics that were interesting and useful and positive and because I just wasn't always feeling that great. So when I started having guests back on the show, my original plan was to do two solo episodes per month and two interviews per month. And that's what I was hoping to do. But that didn't pan out that way. And it just got to the point where it's easier to have guests coming on the show talking about their adventures than it was for me to talk about mine because I wasn't I didn't do that much towards the end of the year. So that's where I am. And that's where I've been. And That's why I didn't do very many solo episodes towards the end of the year. Hopefully that's going to change this year. I've got a couple more solo episodes planned, and hopefully I will be able to keep that up throughout this year. But if I can't, then I won't, because I'm really enjoying these interviews, and I've gotten some great feedback from some of them. 
and I hope to find interesting topics for you. So I've been talking to people about their own outdoor adventures, but I've also been talking about with people about things related to adventures, like mindset stuff. I talked to Raquel Packets about rewiring your negative mindset through hiking. I talked with Jenny Mowbray about solo travel when you're in a relationship, and people I got really, really good feedback about that. A few a couple months back, I talked with Isabel Firecracker about how a child-free lifestyle can help us to have more adventures. And I know that not everyone listening to this podcast is child-free, but for the people that are, I think they found that really useful and I got some really good feedback about that because I think a lot of people who are child-free get a lot of pushback for choosing that lifestyle. So I think people found that really helpful to hear stories of other people who have chosen that way of life. So I want to have some other conversations with people about different lifestyles that we can choose that will support our adventures. I don't know what those things are going to be, but like I said, I really like my conversation with Jenny about how to go on solo trips when you're in a committed relationship. I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with. And so I hope to come up with similar topics that will be useful and interesting to you. We'll see. If you know of anyone that would be a good fit for the podcast, please let me know. I am accepting pitches to the podcast. If you go to hollywharton.com forward slash pitch, P-I-T-C-H, there's a little form that you can fill out or you can send to a friend to fill out and then we can chat. So talking about adventures, I think the first thing that is really useful in planning a new year is to look at what adventures you had over the previous year. So I did a lot of things that I wasn't planning to do and I didn't do some things that I was planning to do. So in the midst of one of the previous year's lockdowns, 2020, I started planning a camping, like a backpacking long distance trail. So one of the things that I wanted to do was go on a long week long walk, like I'd been doing with the South Downs Way and with Ridgeway, but I wanted to camp and backpack rather than staying at B&Bs. And so I wanted to do the Dales Way and I was planning to do it in April. And that totally didn't work because travel wasn't really possible at that time of year. And then I just kind of forgot about it and just gave up on travel. And that was basically because I just didn't want to deal with all the restrictions and I didn't want to plan something and have it be canceled. The thought of that just really stressed me out. So I just kind of stayed at home. And then once things started to open up in the fall, I went on a camping trip, a solo camping trip. And then from then on out, I went on monthly camping trips throughout the rest of the year. And that kind of got me through the year and gave me something to look forward to each month. But I didn't do a week-long trip of any kind. I did some weekend trips. I was on my ethnobotany course all year, or seven months of the year, so I had one weekend a month where I was doing that. And that was nice because it got me out in nature and I was learning and I was camping. And But I'm now realizing that I didn't have any week-long adventures and I feel like I needed one. As I record this, it's still the end of 2021. I, you know, I've taken some days off for the holidays and I'm just still feeling really just tired and exhausted and not really ready to get into the new year. So I'm realizing that I should have taken some more time off, like gone on a proper trip. So hopefully that can happen in 2022. So I think that's something useful for me to learn. So I didn't go on any long distance trails, didn't do any long trips. I did do the monthly shorter trips and I think that was good, but not enough. So that's something to learn. What I did do from the start of the year all through the year was I did my long training walks and my long training runs because I'd signed up for a couple of ultras in the year and originally signed up to them thinking I was going to walk them, but then I ended up running them. And I also did change some of the events that I signed up to. So I did more than I expected. I ran a marathon on my own, like it was a self-made event. <laughs> I was just running by myself on the trails. My husband was crewing for me, but I did run 42K in, I think it was February. Then in July, I ran 100K and in September, I ran 50K. 
And that was amazing. It really made me feel, gave me so much confidence. It just completely destroyed what I thought were my limitations. It made me realize I'm capable of doing so much more than I thought. And it's given me new goals for the new year. And I'm really excited about that. So that was really, really good. I had big adventures. That 100K was, it was just fantastic. It was a great day. I really enjoyed the trails, even though they were really muddy and wet. But the day was really lovely. And it just completely shattered my concept of what my limitations were. So that was really, really good. That to me was the highlight of the year. And that was halfway through the year. That was the first weekend in July. So think about what adventures you had this year, what you did do, what you didn't do, what worked, what didn't, and how you would like to change that for your 2022 adventures. So for me, looking at what worked and what didn't, running, you know, I went beyond what I thought was possible for me. My monthly camping trips toward the end of the year were good. What didn't work out was kickboxing. You may have noticed I haven't talked about kickboxing for a long time, and that's because I had a shoulder injury all last year. So in December of 2020, after the December winter course, which was a modified version of advanced grading, because we were still in, it was right before the winter lockdown, but it was, we still had a lot of restrictions. We did a really modified version of the advanced grading. And so that was good. Right after that, I had a fall and injured my shoulder. And I didn't realize how bad the injury was until probably halfway into 2021. So when things started loosening up as far as restrictions in, I think, around April, I went back to kickboxing. We had outdoor classes. I did some of those, and I think I made my shoulder injury worse. And so from April onwards, I didn't ever go back to class. Beginning of June, I paid for a private MRI because I couldn't get the NHS to pay attention to me. That was when I realized I had a tear and a tendon in my shoulder And I was trying all kinds of things, sports massage, sports therapy, normal massage, acupuncture, which was really great, but none of that worked. And so I was messing around with all these things from January until about September when I finally realized I was going to have to bite the bullet and invest in private doctor. So I went to see a private doctor. Private doctor gave me the solution, which was cortisone injections in my shoulder. I got two of those. Boom. Magically, my shoulder. It was just a massive, massive change. Mobility increased. Obviously, I'm still doing physiotherapy, and that's helping. But pain was just greatly reduced. Swelling went down. Like It was amazing. And I kind of upset with myself for waiting until September to do that, because it just meant that I wasted an entire year when I could have been training, but oh well. It is what it is. Hoping to get the okay in January, so tomorrow, after this goes out, to go back to class. So that's my plan for 2020 is going back to class, but my shoulder did not function in 2021, and that was a big disappointment. But again, I learned a lot of things about how to manage future injuries. It was a big financial investment to go through private healthcare and get this fixed, but it was worth it and I wish I'd done it sooner. So that was my lesson learned for my shoulder. So think about you, like what worked out for you? What didn't? What lessons did you learn? What would you do differently? Did you have any injuries or did you have any other limitations that kept you from having the adventures you wanted? I hope not, but if you did, hopefully you can find the learning opportunity in those injuries. What else did you learn from your adventures this year? So, you know, I learned from running that I'm capable of way more than I thought I was. And I think that has kind of rippled out into other areas of my life. And I think that was a great, great, great learning opportunity. I learned patience for my shoulder. I learned to go for private health care when needed. As far as classes taken, I did my longbow workshop in May, I think it was. And that was amazing. I made a traditional British longbow. I had my wildlife trailing course. Half of that course was kind of bumped over from the previous year because of COVID and lockdown. So that was great. I learned all about deer, trailing deer, and I got better at that. And the whole group got better at that. And it was, we had the last weekend we had was fantastic. Ethnobotany, that was a seven month course. That was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And I learned so much about plants. 
So what did you learn from your adventures this year, whether it was adventures in learning and taking classes, or did you have learning opportunities in your physical and outdoor adventures? Think about those things and think about how you've grown as a person through your adventures and the classes and the things that you've taken. Hopefully, even though there were still restrictions last year, you were able to do things and learn things. How are you feeling in general about last year? You know, like I said, I'm still feeling tired. I'm still feeling stressed. I don't feel like I had enough time off. I really think that I would benefit from a week-long trip away. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> like, it was still a rough year, and I'm I'm glad it's over, and I'm really looking forward to 2022, and I'm really hoping that things can shift for everyone. So how are you feeling in general about 2021? And then looking into the new year, what do you want to experience in the new year? So I would love to keep up my monthly camping trips. Even if I can't do a four-day trip like I've been doing, I would still love to do a monthly trip throughout each year. It's been a really great way, just managing stress and anxiety and just relaxing. It's really, really deeply relaxing for me. So I would like to keep that up. I'm doing the Advanced Shamanic Healing Apprenticeship, which is the kind of second level to the Plant Spirit Healing Apprenticeship that I did a couple of years ago in 2019, I think that was. So I'm really excited about that. We're going to be learning, working with plant spirits for healing. We're going to be doing all kinds of interesting things like land healing. That's going to be one of the last weekends we do. We're going to be working with past life healing, soul retrieval. I'm really, really looking forward to this. I missed that apprenticeship and I missed doing that kind of work. And I'm really looking forward to learning those advanced level things in the new year. And so that's going to be one-to-one -one learning. So I'm hoping to do the first weekend in February, the second one in March, and then we haven't set dates for the rest of it. Again, really looking forward to that. The Coast to Coast, I'm going to be hopefully hiking the Coast to Coast with three friends, end of April, beginning of May. That's really exciting. That's going to be a two-week trip. I've never done this kind of thing with someone else, so I'm a bit nervous about that, but I think it's going to be a really good experience. Really looking forward to it. In June, I'm really hoping that my shoulder will be ready to do the summer course so I can get my black belt in kickboxing. Really, really, really hoping for that. I was hoping to do that in summer course of two years ago in 2020. It's been delayed for various reasons, first COVID, then my shoulder. And I really just want to do this grading and get it over with, <laughs> but have that achievement. That's something that's really important to me. And it's, I find it really, really frustrating that I haven't been able to do it. So I'm looking forward to that, hopefully in the summer. There's only two times in the year when I can do that. And then I'm really feeling like I want to walk one of the Caminos, not the Camino Frances. I do want to do that eventually, but I want to do maybe the Camino Primitivo, which we talked about on the podcast a couple of weeks ago on episode 437. Um, maybe, I don't know, one of the lesser known ones, maybe the Camino Inglés, the Camino Portugués. I was originally going to do both of those last year and couldn't or no, not last year, the year before, and couldn't because of COVID. So we shall see, but the Camino is still calling to me. So those are some of the things that I want to experience in the new year. But I'm also very, very mindful of not overloading my year. So I have two big goals, which are running the North Downs Way 100 in August. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Fingers crossed, I can get that completed and then my black belt in June. So I have those two really big physical goals and I'm really mindful of not filling up my calendar with other things because there's so many things I want to do, but I'm really mindful of not filling my, up my calendar with other things that will impede the training that I need to do in order to achieve those goals. So I kind of feel like I need to make a sign for myself so that I don't do too much. But those are the two big goals, and then everything else kind of fits in around that. So that's why I don't want to do too much until after August. So what do you want to experience in the new year? Think about that, whether it's outdoor adventures, whether it's personal growth stuff, whether it's retreats, like things you want to learn. What do you want to experience in the new year? What kind of adventures do you want to have? And then another question is, what places or activities are calling to you? 
So, again, so hard for me not to fill up my calendar with stuff because there's so many things I want to do and there's just not enough time. But Avebury is still really calling to me and I have not visited it as much as I would like in the last two years. Glastonbury is still calling to me. There was a time a few years ago when I would visit one of those places every month. So I'd go to Avebury one month, Glastonbury the next month, and did that kind of alternating for a couple of years. And those places have energies that just, they're just really calling to me. I miss them. Avebury more than anything. I really need to get back there. I'm hoping to get back there this weekend. We'll see. We'll see. But those places are calling for me. And those are Avebury's a day trip for me. Glastonbury's a weekend trip for me. I have done it in a day, but it, that's just too far of a drive. I don't love driving enough to do that. So those are a couple of places. Granada, Spain is really calling to me again. It's been about five years since I visited there and it just like keeps calling to me. And the Camino. You know, I just read a novel about the Camino and it's rekindled my interest in walking one of them. So think about you, like what places or activities are calling to you? I think it's really useful to make notes of these things and to write them down, even if you don't plan on doing them. I think it's really important to bring that, those kind of cravings to our conscious awareness. And again, I'm being very mindful of not cluttering up my calendar with a ton of stuff, but it's important for me to acknowledge the places and things that are calling to me, because even if I don't do them next year, I can do them the following year. So just write down what places or activities are calling to you. What places or activities keep popping up into your mind? I have Evernote files of places that I want to visit and courses and workshops and retreats and things that I want to do. So I'm always dropping links into those files so that I don't forget about them. And whenever I have time to go on a trip or do a thing, I consult those lists for things that I want to do. So that's kind of my system so that I don't forget them. What new things would you like to try that you've never tried before? So I want to try going on a trip, carrying all my stuff on my back and backpacking. I'm really excited about that. Just, you know, a couple of my other things that I'm doing in the new year, the North Downs Way 100, I've never run 100 miles. That's a massive goal. And I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like, how I'm going to experience it. Really looking forward to that. Yeah, so think about what new things would you like to try that you've never done before? And what would you like to learn in the new year? So I'm really looking forward to going on that advanced shamanic healing apprenticeship. I also really want to do the level four bushcraft that's done at the Woodcraft School, but I can't. That's just too much for next year, even though it starts, I think, in August. It's, I can't even envision fitting that to my calendar for the next year, so I'm not not planning for that. There's also a level four wildlife tracking. So it's a slightly different version of the wildlife tracking course that I did last year. Again, I really want to do it, but I'm going to save that for another year. I just won't have time in 2021 to do that because that takes up a big bulk of the summer. So things that I want to learn. And again, I find it really useful to make lists, to acknowledge the things that I'm craving that I really want to learn even if I'm not going to be doing them next year. So you can always slot them into future years. But think about what you want to learn. And when you're planning your adventures for your new year, really give yourself permission to daydream. So I kind of have a secret list of things that I would love to do, money and time permitting. And again, these are things that you don't have to do in 2022. You can do them in a following year. But I think it's really useful to give myself permission to daydream and write down all the things that I would love to do. I also think it's useful to create a menu of adventures, so small, medium, and large adventures. So you can do lists of day trips that you'd like to do, weekend trips, week-long trips, longer trips. So in my list of places I want to go, I've got them divided kind of geographically. And if I'm looking for a day trip, I can pick from the places that are close by. Or if I want a weekend trip, I can pick from one of those places and, and create my own menu of adventures. So I would like to encourage you to do that. So create either a file on your computer or an Evernote file or something where you organize your dream adventures by how far away they are. You know, will they require a day trip, a weekend trip, a week-long trip, or, or longer? And then you can pick from those. 
And you can add to that list as you start thinking of new places you want to go. I'm often talking about adventures in terms of outdoor adventures or travel adventures, but think about what kind of adventures you want to experience in all aspects of your life. So not just travel and outdoor adventures, but also what adventures you would like to go on with friends, with family. What solo adventures would you like to have? What adventures would you like to have in your work or business? What spiritual adventures would you like to have? What adventures in learning would you like to have? How would you like to play in 2022? And then add to your list, like write all this stuff down, get it out of your head and onto some paper so that you can dream. And then think about which adventures are good for each season. So some adventures might be better for summer or winter or spring or fall. If you want to go skiing or snowboarding or do something that involves winter sports, that's obviously going to have to happen in the winter in your own hemisphere or in the summer if you go to the other hemisphere. Remember that the seasons are the other way around. So if you can travel further afield, that you can find winter when it's summer. Yeah, so I hope that this episode has given you a good idea of how to review the adventures that you've had how to review the learning opportunities that you've had from your adventures, and how to plan the adventures that you want to experience in the new year. I just quickly want to mention this workbook or journal that I have. It's called The Year You Want, and it helps you to plan the experiences that you want to have in the new year. It also helps you to evaluate the year that's just passed. So I will link to that in the show notes. You can also find that by going to hollywharton.com forward slash year, and that will redirect you to where you can buy the book online. And yeah, so I hope you found this interesting and useful and inspiring. I hope that having a menu of adventures also helps you because we don't know what's going to happen in 2022. Like maybe there's going to be lockdowns, maybe there won't, maybe we'll be able to travel freely, maybe we won't. But if you have that menu of adventures, you can plan different things, even if your main adventures are canceled or postponed. And that's something that I learned from the very start of COVID, March of 2020, when I had my trip to walk the Camino Portugues, which I'd been planning for months, had to cancel it, but I had a different adventure, which was just absolutely gorgeous, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think it's super, super useful to have a menu of adventures so that we can have a contingency plan. There's always things that you can do in your local area, hopefully. (laughs) One thing I have learned is that I'm very, very grateful for where I live. I have fantastic trails, and I hope that you do too. So, hope you found this episode interesting and useful. You know what? Please drop me a line and let me know not only what you thought about this week's episode, but let me know what adventures you are planning for this year. I would love to hear from you. So drop me a line at holly at hollywharton.com or find me a line and get in touch there. Let me know what you've got planned and what you did last year. I want to know. Let me know. I really enjoy hearing from people. If you enjoyed this episode, you might want to check out these related episodes. 389, I do a solo episode on how to plan your year when the future feels uncertain. 387, I talk about how to wrap up the current year before you start planning the new one. 379, I discuss how to reevaluate your goals, plans, and projects. 325, I talk about life planning and goals for each decade of your life. And finally, 304, I talk about how to prioritize when you can't do it all. And all five of those episodes have downloadable transcripts, which you don't need to give me your email address. You can just download them online. So again, hope you found this episode interesting and useful. Remember that I'm accepting applications for podcast guests. Just head over to hollywharton.com forward slash pitch and fill out the form. And finally, thank you so much for listening. Happy New Year. And here's to another 52 episodes of podcasts in 2022. Thank you so much. And remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 441 for the show notes on this episode. Happy trails to you. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. 
That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.